just giving a few more minutes for some additional folks to, to join. All right, um, we'll get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's press conference. I am Tara Choza, PR Director for the Connecticut Lottery Corporation. From the CLC today, we have available the chair of the CLC's board of directors, Rob Simulcare, and president and CEO of the CLC, Greg Smith. Before I hand things off to them, I'd like to ask that the press hold their questions until both companies have given their opening statements. If you have a question during the Q&A portion of the press conference, please send your name and outlet in the chat, and I will do my best to call on you in the order received. Thank you. And with that, here's our chair of the board of directors, Rob Simulcare. Thank you very much, Tara. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rob Simulcare, chairman of the board of directors of the Connecticut Lottery Corporation. And uh, as Tara mentioned, I'm joined by our president and CEO, Greg Smith. And uh, to announce some very exciting news regarding the soon to be launched sports betting offering of the Connecticut Lottery. Uh, as you all know, Governor Lamont uh, signed bipartisan legislation on May 27th legalizing online gaming and sports wagering in the state of Connecticut. That legislation granted Connecticut Lottery one of three master licenses to operate an online sports betting platform, as well as the right to operate 15 retail sports betting locations around the state. Today, we are very pleased to announce that we have reached a preliminary 10-year agreement with the company that our sports betting development committee selected as its top choice in our sports betting solution procurement process, Rush Street Interactive. Rush Street Interactive, or RSI as they are called, currently operates online or retail sports betting in 10 different states, including New Jersey and New York. It operates under a number of well-known brands, including Play Sugar House and Bet Rivers. Uh, the brand under which we will operate in Connecticut is still to be announced. This agreement guarantees the Connecticut Lottery at least $170 million in revenue over the 10 year term, but we expect that to be just the start. After launching in New Jersey in 2016 with iCasino, RSI is now one of the largest operators of both online casino and sports betting in that state. In New York, RSI oversees the operations of the retail sports book at the Rivers Casino and Resort in Schenectady, which was the first retail casino in New York history to accept a legalized sports bet and has been the leading commercial sports book in that state by revenue since its launch in 2019. RSI has been recognized as a leading innovator in the field of sports gaming, receiving the prestigious Global Gaming Awards Digital Operator of the Year Award in 2020, and also being named Customer Service Operator of the Year in both 2020 and 2021 by the eGaming Review. RSI is also a leader in responsible gaming practices. They're a platinum member of the National Council on Problem Gambling, as well as a member of the Sports Wagering Integrity Monitoring Association. RSI takes a number of approaches to promote responsible gaming, including deposit limits, self-exclusion controls, and regular promotion of responsible gaming tools and resources. So on behalf of everyone at the Connecticut Lottery Corporation, Greg and I are thrilled to welcome RSI to Connecticut, pending the various steps that still need to take place, including the issuance of regulations and the licensing of RSI. We are very excited to launch with this terrific partner. Now, before I introduce RSI's president to say a few words, I also want to announce another piece of exciting news about Connecticut Lottery sports betting plans. This week, CLC reached a preliminary agreement with SportTech, the state's licensed operator of off-track parimutuel betting, 
to offer retail sports wagering at 10 sport tech locations around the state. Those locations are the Bobby V's restaurants in Stamford and Windsor Locks, the Sports Haven location in New Haven, and the Winners OTB locations in Hartford, Waterbury, Torrington, New Britain, Milford, Norwalk, and the location in Manchester, which is also known as Shays. Our ability to offer retail sports betting at these locations with an experienced operator in sport tech is a big step toward achieving our goal of offering retail sports wagering within a 30 minute drive for most Connecticut residents. We still have five more locations to be announced, including an additional location in Hartford, as well as a location in Bridgeport. I wanna thank Richard McGuire, Ted Taylor, and Andrew Lindley of SportTech for their partnership in reaching this agreement. Pending regulations, local zoning approval, and licensing, we are excited to launch retail sports betting with RSI and SportTech. I also wanna just take this opportunity to thank Governor Lamont, and Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz for their incredible leadership in making this day possible for Connecticut Lottery and the state of Connecticut. I also wanna recognize Commissioner David Lehman and the Governor's Chief of Staff, Paul Mounds for spearheading the tribal negotiations that led to this and also the Governor's General Counsel, Nora Danahy for all of her work on the legislative and the regulatory fronts, uh, that, that work which is still ongoing. So with that, I am very pleased to, Annette, to introduce Richard Schwartz, the president of Rush Street Interactive. Richard, congratulations. We're looking forward to working with you. Welcome to the Nutmeg State. Thanks, Rob, and thanks everyone for joining this afternoon. On behalf of Rush Street Interactive, I'd like to thank the Connecticut Lottery Corporation for its trust and confidence in RSI. We look forward to earning the same trust and confidence of sports fans across the state of Connecticut. We are very pleased to be chosen by the Connecticut Lottery to bring sports betting to the state in what was a very professional, smooth, and efficient selection process. This partnership furthers RSI's deep roots in the tri-state region, where New Jersey was the first state to which we brought our online gaming platform to in 2016 and where we have overseen the operations of a leading commercial sports book by revenue in neighboring New York since 2019. We are very excited to build on the track record of success in Connecticut. Our mission at RSI is to provide players with the widest range of betting options delivered through fun, engaging, and easy to use products and supported by best in class customer service. That is the approach we have taken in the other 10 markets across the country and where we are live today. And these values will remain core to our sports betting operation in Connecticut. Thank you all again. And we look forward to working closely with Rob, Greg, and the entire team at the CLC to offer the people of Connecticut safe, convenient, and unique gaming experiences in what is sure to be one of the most comprehensive and the best sports betting markets available. With that, I will turn it back over to Rob. Thank you. Richard, thank you very much. Again, congratulations and welcome. And so with that, uh, I think uh, we can open the floor for questions. Um, first up, we have a question from Ken Dixon. Ken, uh, you're on mute, so go ahead and unmute yourself whenever you can. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. I just wanted to know what the schedule for getting um, both the sports wagering up and also the online lottery at this point, Rob, please. Um, yes, I will. Um, I'll turn that question over to our CEO and President Greg Smith. So the um, there are so many required steps that are progressing simultaneously in terms of getting to a launch date for sports wagering in Connecticut. Uh, and it's actually not possible to say when that will be completed, uh, while some of those items that still need to be accomplished are contingent on each other. But here's what I can say in that RSI has significant experience setting up online and retail uh, sports book and has been working on a Connecticut plan for over a month. The sport tech locations already exist 
and have ongoing paramutual operations um, continuing. And the CLC has been engaged with these two companies, these two highly qualified and accomplished companies for a few months now. So we expect to be ready when the starting date is set. And how about um, online lottery, same thing? Well, so online lottery is, uh, uh, is a different uh, product altogether, uh, as you can imagine. We will be putting out that RFP within a week. And our expectations on that right now are that it would be operational uh, in the first quarter of 2022. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Um, we next have Mark Pazniokas, the CT Mayor. Uh, can you outline the business uh, arrangement here as to how, uh, you know, what are the fees? How will you be sharing the revenue? Sure, Mark. Thanks for the question. Um, I can give a couple of highlights. Um, first of all, I mentioned the, the, the minimum revenue guarantee in my opening statement. Um, the way that this will primarily work is uh, a revenue share of what's called uh, net gaming revenue. Net gaming revenue essentially is uh, revenue that comes in from betting operations. So first you have all the money that's been bet. You subtract from that, of course, the winnings of bettors. That's how you get to gross gaming revenue. And then net gaming revenue is something that will be shared between RSI and Connecticut Lottery for online. For retail, it will be shared between RSI, Connecticut Lottery, as well as Sport Tech. Um, the, the net part of it is certain uh, expenses that um, RSI will be able to deduct, marketing expenses, uh, as well as uh, player bonusing. Um, and once those expenses are deducted, uh, Connecticut Lottery will receive a majority of the net revenue coming from operations in the state. Um, is there a percentage? I mean, There is a percentage, but the percentage is, a, is sort of a moving target depending on how much the expenses uh, end up being. We have a cap uh, that is built into each year of the contract as, uh, that, that keeps the expenses from getting too high. Um, but depending on how close to that cap we get, that really determines the percentage. So there's no one exact percentage, but it's a majority regardless of, of, um, of, of that uh, net gaming revenue in each year of the contract. And when it comes to uh, limits on, on gambling to uh, combat against problem gambling, are those limits going to be set by you, by the vendor, or will this be set by regulation? Greg, you want to jump on that? Yep. Yes. Um, so the regulations are in draft form, um, and uh, we've seen uh, that there are some uh, uh, limitations established, but re mostly requirements for establishing uh, RG controls. And then what we do know that each system will include is the abilities for players to accentuate those controls. So whatever we set them at, they can take them to a stronger level. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we next have Steven Singer of the Hartford Current. Thank you. Um, the uh, Lamont administration has said that um, <clears throat> They expected it to be up and running by the early September. So I guess you're saying that's not likely. Um, was that unrealistic to say that? And, and I had a couple of I had a follow up question after that. Um, sure, I'll take that. Um, no, I don't think it was unrealistic. I think it's. I, I think there's still a hope that we'll we will end up quite close to that, if not exactly at that point. Um, there obviously are a number of factors that get us to launch you know there right now the one thing that has happened is in late july the 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 amended compact with the tribes was submitted to the bureau of indian affairs um so it's sitting uh in bia right now they have 45 days to uh approve that um and so that's one factor that's that's that is you know right now out of the state's hands then you have regulations and all the other things that have to happen so uh, we don't think that it was unrealistic. We think that we'll be, um, we, we will, we, we are confident we will be uh, taking sports bets, you know, this NFL season and the early part of it, just a matter of what exactly that date will be is, 
is still a bit open to um, consideration. We're not, we're not sure. One other thing I can point out is that in, in some states you've seen in the past that um, opening up retail sometimes is, really is, is easier than opening up online. So there's a possibility that retail could launch first before online. We don't know that for sure, but that's something that we're looking at as a possibility. And um, 170 million you referenced at the start, that's revenue that the state will yield from this or is that total that the state will share? I'm not clear about that, uh, that figure. So that is a minimum revenue guarantee to Connecticut Lottery, to the corporation. Um, and so again, just a minimum, we are, our estimates are that we'll do, you know, certainly more substantial revenue than that over the course of the term. But that is a minimum, our re revenue guarantee to lottery. So lottery will then turn any, any expenses we have from an administrative point of view or uh, in, in terms of managing sports betting will, will be netted out of that. And then we'll remit obviously our net revenue from that to the state as part of our general fund transfer, just as we do with our existing lottery business. And one last question. Um, it looks like you split it. So RSI and Sport Tech will share on the sites, but RSI will be responsible for online. Is that correct? That sounds correct, yes. So when it comes to online, uh, RSI and Connecticut Lottery will be the only two parties. Although I should mention in our agreement with Sport Tech, they, they are eligible for a small percentage of online revenue um, that, will, that will come from uh, their ability to generate uh, uh, traffic and, and users online. So they are eligible for and will receive a small percentage of online revenue as part of their overall partnership here. Um, but primarily their participation, Sport Tax will be via retail revenue share. So that's the way this is set up. RSI's responsibilities for online, and then they also have a responsibility for retail because at the Sport Tech locations, RS, the, it'll be an RSI provided solution that people will be using. So there will be kiosks and there will be um, over-the-counter uh, computer terminals that tellers will use to enter bets at the sport tech locations. And they'll be betting into the same system that, our, that RSI creates for online betting. So the odds that are set, the lines, things like that will be both for online and retail, all provided by RSI. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, we next have uh, Frankie Graziano from WMPR. Thank you very much, Tara. A couple of questions here. First of all, any uh, insight for us as to what this now does with Sport Tech and the state? Um, do you imagine that Sport Tech is now better off in terms of their relationship with the state than they were, say, a month ago when they were possibly talking about suing the state? I'll take that question, Frankie. Thank you very much. Um, we are very pleased um, to have reached this agreement with Sportech. Um, we're now in a good place with them. The state is in a good place with them. As I mentioned in my opening statement, um, we've had a, a great experience working with their senior leadership, Richard McGuire, Andrew Lindley, and Ted Taylor, to reach this agreement. And so as part of this preliminary, preliminary agreement that we've reached with Sportech, Sportech has also, as part of that agreement, in the language of that agreement, um, signed a preliminary release uh, of any claims against the state of Connecticut. So there, uh, the, the, any talk of legal action or litigation between Sport Tech and the state uh, is, is, can now be put to bed and Sport Tech uh, is excited to, to join us as, part of, as our partner as we, as we um, open sports betting in the state of Connecticut. Rob, one thing I'm tripped up on uh, is the other five retail locations. So I understand it'll be 10 with Sport Tech um, do you, do you imagine that the other five locations would be operated by the lottery and RSI and it wouldn't include sports sec or, or would you sublicense somebody else? How would that work for the other five locations? Great question. So for the other five locations, yes, RSI and lottery will, will undoubtedly both be involved in all of those, um, given it's RSI's retail solution that we'll be using. Um, we will be looking at locations. I'll, I'll take, for example, the Excel Center in Hartford. It's no secret that we're looking at the Excel Center as a potential location in Hartford. Um, should we come up with a plan and agreement with the stakeholders there? RSI's sports betting solution would be in the Excel Center. Of course, we would be the master licensee of that. We have, as part of our agreement with Sport Tech, 
an option and it's a Connecticut lottery option to engage them as a service provider, a vendor essentially, to help us operate those non-sport tech locations. So we may utilize their, uh, their, their expertise and their licensed employees to operate some of those non-sport tech locations. We have terms of our agreement that would, you know, compensate them for the cost of doing that. Um, but that is something that we'll determine down the road as we zero in on what those locations are going to be and what their capabilities are. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you, Tara. Thanks, Frankie. And uh, next we have Matthew Waters from Legal Sports Report. Hey, Rob. Hey, Richard. Uh, first of all, Rob, congratulations. I know you guys have been working on this for a while. Um, my, my question was about um, revenue share, which it sounds like that might be proprietary and you're not breaking that out exactly. So maybe I can ask it a different way. Um, I know that you said that you could look at all of these things uh, holistically and that it didn't have to be held to a specific scoring criteria. So can you tell me what led you to select RSI over everyone else? And was RSI's revenue share, was that the, the largest that you received in one of the five bids? Thank you. Thanks, Matthew, for the question. Appreciate that. Um, we chose RSI um, for a number of reasons. First of all, from a purely financial point of view, um, we, we graded and we perceived their offer to be the best offer um, among the ones that were received from the state of Connecticut, from, from various bidders for Connecticut Lottery and therefore for the state, both in terms of, yes, the minimum revenue guarantee, but also the revenue share. Matthew, as you know, I um, was public in my desire for us to receive at least 50% of net uh, gaming revenue, and their uh, their offer did achieve that for us. Um, again, as I stated, we we can't name a specific number because of the deductions and how much how much is deducted will end up determining exactly where on that scale we end up. But we were very pleased with both the revenue share as well as the minimum revenue guarantee. And then Matthew, another thing that led us to choose them was simply our belief in their ability to. Uh, help us compete effectively against the other parties that we know will be in the state um, with the two tribal um, licensees as well. Um, they have a great track record of competing effectively. Um, they have a great track record in terms of integrity in every state they've done business in. Uh, their senior leadership impressed us with their, um, their track record, their grasp of the state and the grasp of everything we need to do to succeed. Also their success in retail was a big factor, Matthew. We, we believe that our retail footprint is a huge advantage that we have in this competition we're gonna be entering into with our friends, uh, the tribal nations. And we wanted someone who uh, has a, a, a strong track record in operating and succeeding in retail. So that was another significant factor. So those are all factors that played into it, but um, to answer your fundamental question, um, their, their offer from a financial point of view, we felt was the strongest. Great, thank you. Thank you. Matthew. Um, next, we have Marjorie Preston of Global Gaming Business. Hi there. And again, yes, I agree. Congratulations to everybody. Is there any benefit at all for Connecticut and RSI to get mobile up and running before New York State? Or since RSA uh, is al already has a presence in New York, could there be, um, for lack of a better word, synergies there? I'll take, Rob, you want to take this or should I? Um, I will, I will, yeah, I'll give that to you, Richard, and then I'll follow up on anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, we're here today, obviously, to talk about the signing partnership with the Connecticut Lottery, but we did uh, acknowledge that we did submit a application uh, in New York on, on Monday. Um, I think the timing is uncontrollable, and everyone's, uh, as we heard from the Connecticut situation, it's a little bit undefined still, and New York is equally undefined. So I think what our focus is, is to be the ready whenever the Connecticut opportunity presents itself. And we have a track record of being first to launch in a wide range of markets. We were first to launch sports betting in Illinois, Indiana, Colorado, first day in Michigan. And so our goal is to be prepared to launch as soon as it's viable in Connecticut. And we can't really worry too much about New York, although obviously if you're operating in both markets, you do have some synergies and some ability to possibly share some players uh, between the different states if, uh, if, if everyone's authorizing the sharing of that information. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie. Um, next, we have Sue Haig of the AP. 
Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. How much of the market share for sports wagering, uh, both online and retail, do you expect that the Lottery Corporation will be able to um, secure, given that you're in competition with Foxwoods and Mohegan? And also, how will RSI really differentiate itself from um, those two tri tribal casinos and FanDuel and DraftKings? Thank you for the question. Um, I will say that while we won't uh, talk specifically about our market share expectations, we expect to be very competitive uh, on a market share basis with uh, FanDuel and DraftKings, um, the, the partners of uh, both of the, the, the tribal nations. You know, some of the advantages we have, we think are, um, we talked about the retail footprint. Um, we believe that our, our retail uh, network, our lottery retail network, um, it can also be very helpful in terms of uh, helping us uh, acquire users and, and bring in customers. And we also think as we go to market with uh, online lottery in the first quarter of 2022, that will give us a, a greater ability to both um, attract and retain users because now we'll have both online lottery and online sports betting. How those things will interact is still to be determined from one another. Um, because we haven't put the RFP out yet for online lottery, but we think we'll have some some real advantages there. Certainly with retail, um, we think we're going to do uh, very well just because of the fact that we're we have the ability to put these retail locations in the biggest population centers of the state. So we expect to do um, very well from a market share point of view in retail, and we think we can we will we'll do well in, in online as well. Maybe I could just add couple of points on the, from the RSI perspective. Um, you know, we, we, last year, the last fiscal calendar year, uh, calendar year, I meant, we, we, we were number one in online gaming revenues in the two largest populated states in the United States that have legalized online gambling in the form of Illinois and Pennsylvania. So we've had success competing very successfully for market share in several very important markets. And we view Connecticut as a great opportunity given what Rob indicated about the re retail footprint being extremely strong and and our company really has a heritage and really understand the land-based uh, industry. And we have omni-channel capabilities. So we will be working very closely with the lottery as well as sport tech to drive a lot of the traffic online. We've done very well at achieving results in Illinois and Pennsylvania in that area as well, where we have partnerships with land-based casinos. Uh, on the retail standpoint, um, our product is a very strong product. It's very um, high quality. And the results, I think, are, are, are clear in, in the three largest states, again, in the United States that have legalized sports betting and retail, New York, Illinois, and Pennsylvania. Uh, we are number one in those three states from a commercial revenue standpoint. So we had a lot of success in uh, retail sports betting environments in large population areas. And we expect the advantage of having you know, a, a venue close to 30, you know, most of the people in, in, in Connecticut are going to be 30 minutes or so away from a retail sports book as part of our arrangement. We think that's an exciting opportunity to really drive those players online like we've done in other places. The last thing I'll just add is when it comes to the mobile sports book technology, we are one of the market leaders in quality in the industry. I listen to Krychek, an independent and very well respected uh, research firm who covers our industry closely, does a ranking every quarter and most recent one announced in July had us as a top four quality app in the in the industry out of 31 tested. We constantly are improving the quality of the experience and we've added all kinds of features recently. The in-game betting is a very strong feature of our products. You can bet on games in the middle of the games, which is something that a lot of players really desire. We have a huge library of streaming content, some unique content as well arriving soon. And so we just have a, a really great product. Our customer service has won awards the last two years in a row for being the highest quality in the industry. And that's a very important experience because we want to make sure that we earn and retain player trust at all times and customer service is part of the user experience that we focus very heavily on. We also focus on cash outs. Over 80% of our player requests to a draw are approved in real time in an automated system that's very sophisticated that players absolutely love. And that's given us a real competitive advantage in the industry of players online. And when they do win, they want to be able to cash out quickly. The last thing I'll mention is that we built a lot of features about trust and integrity and transparency for the players. So the sign up bonus for us is one times playthrough only, which I think is really uh, exciting for a lottery organization to use because it lets players know that if you bet a deposit and you bet one time and you win, you can cash out. We're not going to have any strings attached with any bonus offers. And players really respect that when they learn the difference between how we do it, and how other sites do it. So we think that's a really strong way for us 
together with the lottery to earn and retain the player trust in, in Connecticut. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Richard and Rob. Um, we have a question from Brian Hallenbeck of the New London Day. Brian, are you still with us? There you are. I had some trouble unmuting there. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I guess, uh, Richard, you sort of uh, addressed this in, the, in your last response. I was going to ask about about the products that we can expect to see in Connecticut. And uh, if we look to uh, your operation and the other jurisdictions that uh, that you're operating in, I mean, will we see uh, what we see there? Was that what, what we're going to see in Connecticut? And uh, and any 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 light you can uh, shed on that? Sure. I mean, there are uh, a lot of similarities between our platform and the product we'll be offering in Connecticut and other markets. I think Schenectady and Rivers Casino in Schenectady is, is, is obviously uh, an example nearby in the same region that would be an example of the type of, of product and service you could expect. One thing we do very well, I think, in the retail standpoint is we have a our entire user our customer service team is available in real time to answer questions that may occur on the at the actual venue itself. So if a player wants to know a nuanced bet and why they didn't win a bet they thought they should have in some you know rugby match in, in Australia, that may be just a random example. We want to make sure that we get those answers to, to the consumer in real time. And we don't expect the frontline employee to always know the answer to every question. So we have our experts available in real time to answer questions, which we have discovered really creates an enhanced uh, experience for the consumer when they have answers to questions they, that may be detailed that may not be otherwise known in real time to the staff on at the property. So that's an example of something that we're going to bring. We're very excited about. We have a lot of experience. And even as connected in New York, we are not the largest land-based casino in, in New York uh, that runs sports betting, but we do, we do generate the most revenues for sports betting of all the ones that are published. And so that's just an indication that we hit above our weight when it comes to retail sports book revenues. And I think that's one of the reasons why can I get lottery knowing that we're going to have 15 retail locations really appreciated what we could bring to them in terms of uh, results. Something I'll add to that um, in terms of features, and it's important for a lot of players in the space is how you can fund your account or get money back out of your account if you're an online player. Um, these, lo these retail locations we've just mentioned with Sportech and then the others that come online, players will be able to both fund and withdraw money from their online accounts at those locations at the very least, if not others over time. So this is the kind of service that we know is important to players in the space. Um, and we know, you know, Rush Street's had a great track record of providing those kinds of products for users. That's why they're so popular, why they're winning awards and why we think our, our retail footprint, both with sport tech and, and then potentially down the road as well with others will be a big differentiator for us. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, are there any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. And thank you especially to Richard Schwartz, Rob Picard, and everyone at Rush Street Interactive. We're excited about working with the team. Uh, a few final housekeeping items for members of the media. Uh, we issued our press release earlier regarding this announcement. If you haven't received it, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll get it right out to you. It's also available on our website at ctlottery.org. And finally, this press conference has been recorded. It will be available in MP4 format upon request and can also be streamed on the Connecticut Lottery's YouTube channel. Um, and once again, thank you. Thanks to um, the guys at Rush Street and thank you, Rob and Greg. Thank you very much. And also thanks to the guys at Sport Tech as well. Appreciate, uh, appreciate that. Thank you, Tara. Absolutely. All right.